I watched a lot of this hearing today. These whistleblowers were tremendous patriots. Democrat Party is filled with loathsome scum. And just like with the FBI whistleblowers, all they did was try to character assess. I like this guy, Ro, what's his name, Ro Condon, who goes on Fox to pretend he's, he's a moderate, he's another fraud. Jamie Raskin, he is a Marxist, just like old daddy. Then you have some of these radicals going on about, can't use a two-tiered system of justice. That's appropriating it from the civil rights movement. Ah, shut the hell up. We'll say what we want to. Speech police. But these Democrats stand shoulder to shoulder. Their boots are clicking. They're unbelievable. You know, we we have Republicans who peel off. I can't put up with this anymore. Not them. Now, most of you didn't see this. If you typically watch CNN or MSNBC, which you don't, but I'm just saying the, the general you, they didn't even run it. They censored it. Censored it. They didn't even run it. Because they don't want you to know about Joe Biden, the crook. And Merrick Garland now, ladies and gentlemen, has to be, has to be said to be a, a mob lawyer. But I'm getting ahead of myself, which I like to do from time to time. I want to read some of the opening testimony from Ziegler, Joe Ziegler, the second IRS whistleblower who was incredibly effective in some ways more than the first. And he says in part in his opening statement, I'd recently heard an elect official say that I must be more credible because I am a gay Democrat married to a man. And by the way, that just drives the Democrats more nuts. More nuts. I'm no more credible than this man sitting next to me due to my sexual orientation or my political beliefs. Remember a couple of those uh, independent journalists who testified and they were trashed? Remember they both said they were Democrats and they voted for Biden? Didn't matter. They, they tried to destroy them. Power, baby. Since I was raised and have always strived to do what is right, I've heard from some that I am a traitor to the Democratic Party, and that I am causing more division in our society. I implore you that if you were put in my position with the facts as I have stated them, that you would be doing the exact same thing, regardless of your political party affiliation. I hope that I'm an example to other LGBTQ people out there who are questioning Doing the right thing is a potential cost to themselves and others. We should always do the right thing, no matter how painful the process might be. I kind of equate this to coming out. It was honestly one of the hardest things I've ever had to do. I contemplated scenarios that would have been highly regrettable, but I did what was right, and I'm sitting in front of you here today. Look how he has to explain himself, the poor guy. I would like to take a minute to thank some people for their unfettered help and support. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but first off, God, for giving me the strength and courage to go through this process. My husband, who's been my rock, has put up with me and my stress, and has had to deal with his personal information being displayed on social media as part of this matter. You believe it? This is how the Democrat Party Treats minorities. I don't care if you're gay, black, whatever you are. This is how they treat you. Because it's a Marxist, iron-fisted operation. They don't care about gays. They don't care about blacks. Unless they can use them. Says, I would like to address a couple of high-level arguments that have been raised against us. Gary Shapley and me. Gary Shapley's the other IRS whistleblower. Also, very, very impressive. The first concerns Mr. Weiss's authority. This is guy, David Weiss, who the Democrats in and out of the media keep saying, he's appointed by Trump, appointed by Trump. Trump appointed over 3,000 people to the federal bureaucracy. But David Weiss appoints to 
excuse me, reports to Merrick Garland. And is there going to be a Republican one day who actually says that? I care who appointed him? He reports to Merrick Garland. And if Merrick Garland didn't like what he was doing, he'd be gone. Merrick Garland will never touch a special counsel against Biden. He'll do everything he can to prevent it. Because he knows that will destroy Biden and his presidency. Why do you think the Democrats kept pushing for a special counsel against Trump? Without any predicate. Mr. Weiss stated that he had been granted ultimate authority over this matter, but then later stressed in the same letter that his charging authority is geographically limited and that he would need to ask President Biden, appointed U.S. attorney, his, Biden's appointed U.S. attorneys to, uh, to partner with him in charging the case. A U.S. attorney is not free to go into another jurisdiction, period. Unless they get the written consent of the President of the United States or perhaps the Attorney General in his stead, delegated to him. He can't just go into another division or they'd be all over each other. There's 93 of them. We know that, <coughs> excuse me, we know that as recently as March 2023, even the Department of Justice Tax Division attorney assigned to the case questioned Mr. Weiss's authority and didn't know where Mr. Weiss was going to charge the, the case. Mr. Weiss stated that he was making decisions necessary to preserve the integrity of the prosecution consistent with federal law and so forth. He never had the authority to go anywhere. Let's see the letter that gave it to him from Biden or Garland. There isn't one. Well, he never asked. Well, apparently, that's the issue, isn't it? And he goes on. With respect to, uh, let's see here, Hunter Biden. Under the criminal code, two key considerations in charging Violations under Title 26 are willfulness and a tax loss. The criminal context, willfulness is defined as a voluntary, intentional violation of a known legal duty. The tax loss is the monetary loss to the government. After one, our testimony, some have missed issues regarding whether Hunter Biden's conduct with respect to his income tax violations was willful and whether there was sufficient monetary loss to the government. He says, in early 2020, Hunter Biden unfiled, unfiled and delinquent tax returns were being prepared, which includes his 2018 tax return. During the 2020 time period, uh, let's see here, by returns uh, by Hunter Biden's own account, he was sober, newly married, and writing his memoir. Hunter Biden's accountants requested that that he signed a representation letter stating that all deductions for business purposes and were being reported appropriately. Statements Hunter Biden made in, the, uh, in this filing raised questions. Raised questions. For instance, he claimed business deductions for payments to the Chateau Marmont, a hotel room for a supposed drug dealer. Sex club membership falsely referenced on the wire is a golf membership. Hotels he was black that uh, he was blacklisted from and Columbia University tuition payment for his daughter. Didn't somebody go to prison for this? Yes. But he didn't even do this. And that was the CFO of the Trump organizations. Guys like 78 years old. The false deductions claimed by Hunter Biden caused a false return to be prepared that underreported his income by approximately 267000 causing a loss to the Treasury of 106000 With respect to the 2014 tax year, Hunter Biden did not report any of the money he earned from Burisma for the 2014 tax year, which would have been a tax loss to the U.S. Treasury of about 125000 According to my previous testimony, he says Hunter Biden did not report this income to the IRS or pay tax on this source of income. He says, I'd like to make clear that the charging document from the District of Delaware, Hunter Biden was charged with failure to timely pay taxes 2016 and 2018 in excess of $100,000 for each of those years. 
on Hunter Biden's 2017 and 28 tax return. He reported taxes owed of 581000 and 620000 Respectfully, this tax amount for 28 would not have included the additional alleged tax due and owing from a filed false tax return. By the way, during his testimony, Ziegler, who was the point man in many of the, much of this, he said the, the, his best calculation is based on what he had. He didn't have everything, and they weren't allowed to conduct interviews. He got one interview out of 12 that they were able to conduct, that the Bidens took in about $17 million. Think about this. With no business, no service, nothing. This is as corrupt as it gets. It is as corrupt as it I mean, the most corrupt thing is, you know, maybe Chappaquiddick. But beyond that, this is as corrupt as it gets. Remember how they covered for Ted Kennedy. His testimony is very involved. It's quite long. There was other information that came out. Marjorie Teller Green, she did an excellent job. Ladies and gentlemen. Hunter Biden was buying sex across state lines. He's paying for airline flights for young prostitutes to come from Utah to Washington and so forth and so on. This is considered sex trafficking. It's considered a man act violation. The president of the United States' son and the Democrats, they were very upset about this, weren't they, Mr. Producer? Not one of them was concerned about sex trafficking. Not one. Not one of them was concerned that Hunter Biden didn't pay his taxes. Not one. Not one was concerned about the obstruction that took place, DOG into the IRS. Not one. They talked about Trump over and over again. They talked about how the Republicans are appropriating the term two-tier justice. And they better stop because that belongs to the civil rights movement, don't you know? So they're trying to silence them. Jamie Raskin. It's a good little Stalinist communist. This guy, Ronan, is that his name? Ron. Ro Cone. What's his name, right? Ro Khanna. Wouldn't even let the guy finish. He's grilling the guy. The guy can't finish. His sentence was obnoxious. Goes on TV. Oh, that guy's sensible. No, he's not. He's a jerk. There's a lot here, a whole lot. Listen to this. Cut one, go. I've recently discovered that people are saying that I must be more credible because I'm a Democrat who happens to be married to a man. I'm no more credible than this man sitting next to me due to my my sexual orientation or my political beliefs. The truth is my credibility comes today from my job experience with the IRS and my intimate knowledge of the agency's standard and procedures. I was raised and have always strived to do what is right. Although I do have my supporters, others have said that I am a traitor to the Democratic Party and that I am causing more division in our society. I implore you to consider that if you were in my position with the facts as I have stated them, ask yourself if you would be doing the exact same thing. I hope that I am an example to other LGBTQ people out there who are questioning doing the right thing at the potential cost of themselves and others. I want you to hear more from this gentleman, and I want you to hear more from Mr. Shapley. Uh, These are stand-up gentlemen trying to do their jobs, and they ran into the Biden mob family. They ran into Garland and the Department of Injustice. They ran into a department that would not take these cases 